Oh boy, Apple Watch OS X has a lot of features you're probably going to care about if you watch this channel. We, we got to talk about it. What is up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Dave from Chase to Summit and today I want to talk all things Apple because if you're unaware, yesterday Apple held its annual WWDC conference or Worldwide Developer Conference where they would typically talk about all the geeky stuff that most consumers don't care about like software tweaks under the hood and things like that. However, this year, this time around, there were a bunch of new and exciting hardware releases from the new 15 inch MacBook Air to the insanely powerful M2 Ultra Mac Pro and even the new $3,500 VR headset dubbed the Vision Pro. And I'm not in this video here today to talk about those things because that's not really what this channel is all about. However, I do plan on talking about the Vision Pro eventually, so stay tuned for that. But if you're like me and you're watching WWDC and you're looking down at your Apple Watch Ultra or Series 8 and hoping hoping Apple would announce something that would involve you, they eventually did. About an hour into their conference, they finally brought up the Apple Watch, and there's some pretty big upgrades that I wanna talk about in this video today. So number one, the first big update to the Apple Watch ecosystem is going to be the Watch OS X update. This is a global new version of Watch OS from Apple, and this has a whole bunch of things involved with it. I'm not, not gonna go through every little detail of Watch OS X, but there's a lot here. In Watch OS X, there's a new user interface that has a new slick way of scrolling through your widgets on your watch face. You can basically dive into all of your widgets and scroll through them over your watch face instead of having to swipe through them individually, which is pretty cool. On top of that, all of the common apps like your weather and stock app and things like that all got a facelift to look a little bit more modern. There's a lot more gradients and cooler looking animations and things like that. And there was a pretty big update to the activity and wellness app, which shows your step count and things like that, where they've changed how that whole display looks. It's got a much cleaner interface and it now uses the entire display on the watch, so it uses more real estate and it makes it a little bit easier to see. And on top of the new aesthetics and how things look, there's also a new app draw, and there's a couple of new watch faces for those of you that are into Snoopy. I'm not sure why they chose that, but yeah, Snoopy. Moving right along to the second update that Apple announced at WWDC is new external sensor support specifically for cycling. I'm personally not a big cyclist, but I think a lot of people out there will be very excited about the inclusion of the new sensor support, and now Apple Apple Watch will support Bluetooth smart sensors for cadence, power, and speed directly natively on the Apple Watch using the Workout app, which is super cool. So for those of you out there that have always considered buying a Garmin or a Koros or a Polar or a Suunto, because you had that need of support for your power meter on your bike, you can now look at the Apple Watch because it will support that in the very near future. Unfortunately, still no Ant Plus support that's still dedicated to the dedicated sport watches out there, but all the Bluetooth sensors should work on the Apple Watch from now on. One big question I have about the additional sensor support on the Apple Watch is selfish Officially, I'm mainly a runner, and I'm wondering if they're going to expand their sensor support for running as well as cycling for things like the Stride Pod natively without having to use the Stride app. That's something to be determined. I'm not sure yet. We'll have to find out once I have beta installed on my watch. Before we dive into the next new thing, if you're finding this video helpful or educational or fun or anything, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below because that really helps me out. And if you're planning on picking up an Apple Watch, check out the links in the description because they help support this channel. Okay, let's move on. Moving right along, the third new thing announced at WWDC is a new cloned workout view on your iPhone using metrics from your workout app on your watch. This is pretty interesting. In short, what's going on here is when you start an activity on your watch, a new dialogue will pop up on your phone that will allow you to blow up all the metrics from your watch full screen on your phone. And the cool thing about this is specifically for cycling, now you could buy a cheap phone mount, put it on your handlebars, and you'd be able to see all of your metrics like your speed, cadence, and even your heart rate from the optical sensor on your watch right there on your handlebars so you don't have to look down on your wrist while you're riding a bike. This is going to be really interesting for cyclists out there because instead of buying a big expensive bike computer that may cost four or $500 from Garmin or another company, you can now just use your iPhone and your Apple Watch and get very similar information right there on your handlebars. And again, I do have some questions about this new feature like if it'll work for all activities or if it's only for cycling because at the time of filming this video, the only examples I've seen online are for cycling. However, I do see a use case for this for running. 
and specifically for treadmill running, because for me personally, I do treadmill run and sometimes I do mount my phone or my tablet, my iPad up on my treadmill so I can you know, watch a movie or a podcast or listen to music or something like that while I'm running. And it would be super cool to be able to have a view of all of my metrics right in front of me on my treadmill. If I'm doing like a hard workout or something like that, seeing my cadence and my pace and my heart rate from the optical sensor right in front of me would be super cool. But again, I'm not sure if that'll work yet. Time will tell. Moving right along into the fourth new thing announced at WWDC is native workout app third-party integration. Now, specifically, Apple's been working on a new API that will allow third-party developers to tie into the native workout app on your Apple Watch. Now, why would this be important? Well, in Apple's demo, they showed a new integration with Training Peaks. And if you're unaware what Training Peaks is, it's a platform for training. Duh. The cool thing though is now you can pull workouts in from your Training Peaks platform. If your coach is developing a new workout plan or something like that, you can actually pull those workouts directly into the Apple Workout app natively on your watch with no additional app, which is super cool. This isn't just specific to Training Peaks because there's an API now. It allows all third-party developers to make use of this. You could even have something like Garmin Connect, bring your workouts into your Apple Watch, which will never happen because of Garmin, but hey, it's possible now. With this new API, API now available, it's going to be super interesting to see how other third-party developers other than Training Peaks leverage this new access to the Apple Workout app. And again, time will tell. Moving right along to the fifth new thing announced at WWDC specific to the Apple Watch is going to be the use of high-frequency motion data. That sounds very scientific, but the idea here is that Apple is going to leverage the accelerometer and gyroscopes and sensors within the watch to detect high-frequency motion. So what is high-frequency motion. Well, this will mainly apply for things like golf, where you're swinging a golf club at a high speed. The watch will be able to pick that up and detect your swing, or if you're swinging a baseball bat, or even if you're swinging a tennis racket. The watch should be able to generate some new additional data and metrics from those motions that you can use after the fact to optimize your training for whatever sport you're doing. Again, it's early days for this new feature, but it will be really interesting to see how Apple and other developers use this new information. Moving into the six Next new thing, uh, this one's pretty exciting, an updated compass app. There's going to be new waypoints that are automatically set for when you lose your cell phone signal that will be displayed right on the compass app on your Apple Watch. I think this is going to be super useful because if you're out on a trail run or a hike, you'll be able to see exactly where and when you had cell phone coverage and where you lost it. So in the worst case scenario, you could actually backtrack to that location if you needed to send a text message or something like that. I think this is really useful information. So there'll be new waypoints for losing cell phone signal and for where you can reacquire it, but there's also another new waypoint that will automatically pop up in the Compass app, and that's where you can make an emergency call. The emergency call icon is different from cell phone signal because you can make an emergency call or an SOS call from any cell phone antenna. It doesn't have to be like Verizon or AT&T or even your provider. It could be any provider because that's how cell phones work. They can leverage any antenna for emergency calls. And now your Apple Watch will display where you can make an SOS call, which is pretty useful and a nice feature to have. On top of these new waypoints, there's also a new feature within the Compass app to turn it into sort of a 3D view of all of your waypoints that'll show the elevation of each waypoint along your route. I'm not actually sure what the use case is here because it's not actually drawing like a contour line between or an elevation profile along the route. It's really only showing your waypoints. But again, I don't actually have this feature yet. Time will tell how useful it is. Right now it does look a little bit gimmicky, but I guess we'll see. And now we've come to the final new thing announced at WWDC this year. And this is the biggest one, which is why I saved it for last. Topographic maps are now finally coming to the Apple Watch. This is huge. So if you go back to last September and watch my in-depth review about the Apple Watch Ultra, I criticized it in a few ways. And one of the ways I criticized it was because it doesn't come with any form of full mapping out of the box. You have to download a third-party app like Work Outdoors or Gaia GPS or something like that in order to have maps on an $800 watch. So it appears that Apple has heard my cries and now they've included topo maps on the Apple Watch Ultra and any Apple Watch for that matter that's 
running this new version of watchOS. Apple did not share a ton of detail on how these maps will work. It was sort of a high level view about them. And I've got a lot of questions. The first question I have is, will they be routable? And what I mean by that, will you be able to put in a destination and have the watch generate a route to get to that destination? That could be in the backcountry, or it could be on a road or a trail, anywhere. Should You should be able to put in your destination and have the watch do all the work and create turn-by-turn -turn directions to get you there. During the demonstration, during the event, it looked like this might be the case. However, I'm not totally clear. We'll have to wait and see once I can get this installed on my watch. Another thing that wasn't clear about these new topo maps is will they be a new layer within Apple Maps? Will you have to open Apple Maps to see the new topo map layer? Or will this be part of the compass widget instead where you can add a layer to the compass widget and see your backtrack information and things like that? Another huge question I have about these new maps is will we be able to install them as a data page within an activity like trail running or hiking, for example, so you can scroll through your activity and see your distance and mileage and then get to a map page to see more context about your route. From what I understand, that's not the case here. You'll have to dive into a different app to get to the map and then go back in your activity, which is kind of a bummer. I hope they can Im implement this as sort of a data page within activities, fingers crossed. And I think the biggest question I have about the topo maps is will we be able to store them offline within the storage of the watch? Because if you're like me, you're a trail runner or a hiker and you go out in the backcountry, you don't have cell signal. So we need the ability to install the maps to the watch so we can see them all the time, regardless whether or not we have cell phone signal. Again, that answer is to be determined. I don't have it yet, and they didn't explain that very clearly in the demonstration in the presentation. For now though, I am very excited about the topo maps on the Apple Watch and the Apple Watch Ultra, and I can't wait to try them out. And it looks like there's a ton of detail that's shown on these maps, like contour lines and gradients and shadows, and also labels for trails and roads and waterways, and even points of interest like the peak of the mountain or a camping area or things like that should all be available on the map, which is very exciting. But we will have to wait and see when we have it on our watches to see how it actually works and if it's actually better than using some of the other alternatives like Gaia GPS or Work Outdoors. And now we have reached the end of this video. Those are all the new things of note, in my opinion, for the Apple Watch that's coming in watchOS 10 in the coming months. I do have the developer version installed on my phone and I'm waiting to get the developer version of watchOS installed on my watch, but we're not there yet, stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below because I will have a bunch of follow-up content testing out all these new features on the Apple Watch. So make sure you stick around for that. And there was a lot more that was announced at WWDC, including a new Apple Health version for iPad, and of course that new Vision Pro, but we'll save my thoughts for that for a separate video. Today, I just wanted to run through all the new stuff specific to the Apple Watch and what I think about it so far. And now I wanna hear from you. Are you excited for the new Watch OS for Apple Watch? What features are exciting you? Are you switching over to Apple Watch because of the inclusion of maps? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And with that, that is the end of this quick video and a quick rundown on what I think about all these new features from Apple. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below. And if you're interested on in picking up an Apple Watch, check out the links in the description because they do help support this channel and they cost nothing extra to you. And with that, I'll see you next time. I gotta go now. Bye. Bye.